Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar we're on for the UKV have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days we've got continued pretty chilly weather coming up over the next five days we've got northerly wind at the moment and high pressure will topple in the next couple of days under the cooler air mass we'll likely see average sort of days temperatures in the mid to high teens maybe touching 20 degrees in a few areas but chilly cold and nights with temperatures widely dropping into the single digits uh, maybe even mid to low single digits in a few areas especially perhaps tonight um, and as we head beyond that when we look at the gfs gm east and of and the ensembles we have to see that it's going to continue to be high pressure dominated over the next week to 10 days there will be bouts of precipitation and cloud with small little low pressure systems moving through little troughs uh, so it's not going to be high and dry the whole time but it will generally be high pressure dominated with blocking around sitting to our uh, north and our west. But we're now seeing a consistent signal, perhaps, that we have seen in the last couple of days, but especially in today's operational runs, that perhaps at day 10 and beyond, we do see proper autumnal conditions arriving. Proper low pressure, unsettled, perhaps even stormy weather arriving as that high pressure that's sitting over towards us sort of migrates away and we see low pressure replace it sitting over the top of us again it isn't like a complete uh, reversal of the blocking pattern and the high pressure we have at the moment it's just a slight position change of where these uh, systems are setting up so it can change very much uh quite well can change can change quite significantly over the next couple of days so we'll have to see but we are seeing a signal from all the operational runs today some very unsettled weather to end the month and start october so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description so you start on the live radar you can see it is widely pretty dry a few showers across northern scotland and parts uh, perhaps across the east coast of england as well but again, it is widely quite dry here. Some cloud moving in, but further westwards and southwards, it is very dry with a lot of sunshine around. Yes, though, we do have a chilly northerly wind. Uh, it doesn't look too bad here on the precipitation charts, but it is chilly out there whenever that cl uh, whenever the clouds cover the sun or if you're in the shade and that wind does blow. It is chilly. feel like temperatures probably in the low teens out there, uh, but on the thermometer, some areas in the south perhaps getting towards 17, 18. So, so when the wind die, does, does die down, we see a bit of sunshine. It doesn't feel too bad out there, but it's the early mornings and the evenings at the moment that are chilly so it's still a little bit of a hint of heat out there uh, when we're in the sunshine a bit of warmth but as soon as that sun goes away and that wind starts blowing it is feeling proper autumnal and chilly out there with quite a cold upper air, uh, air mass at the moment luckily though we are generally mostly under the higher pressure so yes it is chilly we have got a quite a strong northerly breeze but we are pretty dry you can see across parts of germany and northern europe in general Look, a lot of precipitation here, a lot of heavy showers and even some snow starting to fall over the Alps as we have this cold air mass spreading through. If you do have a look at the temperatures around the peak time of the day, around 4pm, um, you can see that it is widely blues and yellows today. Maybe the hint of orange towards parts of western England down to the southwest. That's temperatures perhaps getting towards 16, 17, 18 degrees, but widely sort of that mid to low teen. So chilly out there. And you can see how it is pretty cold across Germany. All those showers, that's where a lot of this colder air is filtering into and yeah it looks really chilly indeed and this weather is just going to continue it does look likely in the next couple of weeks we are more often than not going to be below average in some in terms of upper air temperatures with precipitation around cloud around it is going to equate to some quite cold conditions at the surface nothing is going to produce anything wintry by any means but could be days coming off of low teens maybe high single digits in some areas feeling really chilly considering we were seeing uh mid to high 20s only a oh, couple of weeks ago so yeah big changes coming but this is the transition time um from summer to autumn into winter um so from that proper warm hot days that we see pretty consistently in the summer to starting going much cooler and more unsettled we're seeing that proper transition uh coming at the moment so yeah it is due and and it is happen every time of year but yeah it, it is going to be a bit of a shock considering what we have had uh, in terms of our summer condition over the last couple of months so if you go to the ukv and have a look at the precipitation and the temperature over the next five days and have you run over to the, this afternoon you can see that a few showers in the north of scotland and a few airs of cloud and a few showers into eastern parts of england as we head through tonight those showers do diminish but continue perhaps across northern scotland and you do see a bit of cloud 
moving in. So could hold those temperatures up a little bit where we see those cloud, clouds, but it will still be a little bit chilly. Tomorrow afternoon, a few showers around, perhaps across the north, Midlands and parts of northern England, perhaps in East Anglia, but nothing too crazy and a bit of sunshine around as well, so it won't feel too bad. And that northerly wind is getting cut off. So yeah, the thermometer temperatures will improve slightly, but the feel-like temperatures will probably improve quite a bit as well, by a good few degrees, just because that wind is starting to get cut off. And as we head through to Monday, you see some precipitation pushing in from the north and the west. As I said, it isn't going to be bone dry over the next five to seven days, but there will likely be quite a lot of dry weather. A few showers, though, here, a bit of thicker rain there, uh, with thick cloud and rain there, and just bouts of small areas of cloud and precipitation moving in. And you see that through Tuesday, another drier day, and into Wednesday, yes, yeah, some precipitation starting to push into the north and west, but again, widely dry, perhaps, though, but towards the Thursday, we see some heavier precipitation. Small little low pressure systems sort of squeeze between higher pressure systems could move it and could get a bit of heavier, more widespread rain. But we'll have to keep an eye on that as five days away. You look at those upper air temperatures, look at that, really chilly at the moment, around freezing and 800 phpa, really quite cold. And those wind uh, speeds coming directly in from the north, so it is chilly, especially towards the coasts. But as we head through to this afternoon, you can see temperatures peaking around 16 to 18 degrees, but widely mid to low teens elsewhere, apart from sort of central England. As we head through to night into the early hours of tomorrow, you can see widely mid to high single digits in the south. Um, actually colder in the south than in the north because of that cloud, as I said, pushing into parts of northern areas that could hold those temperatures up. But it's still widely chilly compared to what we have had over the last four months. Um, uh, not quite as cold uh, as the night we've just had, but still will be chilly out there. Tomorrow's temperatures will be around uh, the same, if not slightly higher, maybe more widely, 16 to 18 degrees and maybe 19 degrees in a few spots, um, because of course um, we do have uh, that wind getting cut off a little bit and a bit milder air starting to push in. And as we head into early hours of Monday, still perhaps high single digits in a few areas, but across central areas, perhaps low teens. And as we head towards Monday afternoon, for the Queen's funeral, you can see actually it's been a really nice day. So a bank holiday for the Queen's funeral. Going to be quite a sad day, of course. Uh, I know a lot of people will probably be out um, and a lot of doing a lot of mourning, uh, watching the funeral. Uh, and it does look, luckily, it's going to be pretty dry and it's going to be a pretty moderate, warmish temperatures. That's good if you are uh, heading out that day. Um, so, yeah. Not too bad on Monday, temperatures perhaps peaking around 20 or 21 degrees, maybe a little bit chillier further northwards. As we head towards Tuesday, still perhaps mid to high teens, maybe 20 degrees in a few spots. And again into Wednesday, again similar, perhaps even slightly higher, 20, 21 degrees. Those upper air temperatures, if we have a look at them, you can see they are warming up slightly there as we do have a wedge of warmer air squeezing in before the higher pressure. We are going to see temperatures still potentially reach 20 degrees over the next couple of weeks, but these sort of warm, consistent 20 plus degree days, they are a thing of the past, at least until next summer. Um, yes, there will be isolated 20 degrees here or there, widespread 20 to 25 degrees. I think it, we're not likely to see it again. We're more likely to see widely mid to low teens over the next couple of weeks. So if we do go over to the GF, GFS and see what that is showing over the next couple of weeks, again, you can see the northerly wind at the moment. Look at those upper air temperatures. Really quite cold, zero degrees at 850 HPA, the potential equivalent temperatures. All these blues moving in, showing a cold air mass and the temperature deviation blues again. Well below average for this time of year. If we do move beyond that, you can see the high pressure just topple. Initially very dry uh, and not too bad, but it's by Wednesday, Thursday, you see this little low pressure system squeezed in between two high pressure systems high pressure systems, one to our east, one to our west, uh, and that gives us that precipitation. But it does get squeezed and eventually moves away, and we go under higher pressure. Doesn't look too bad, there's blocking around towards day 10, and generally wind direction is sort of stagnant, but perhaps in from the east or the north. So slightly cooler wind direction, but you look at those upper air temperatures, and you can see they aren't too bad. It's beyond that, though that we have to keep an eye on as we head towards uh, well in the future. You see the high pressure eventually disintegrates, splinters to our east and our west, and look at this, big low pressure arriving from the west. Real deep low pressure systems, 970 millibars there, 
very strong winds, cooler upper air temperatures. Yeah, it's not amazingly cold at this stage, but it's trending cooler. A lot of cold air spilling into the North Atlantic, and we could see some very unsettled stormy conditions. The thing is, we're seeing this consistently on the operational runs from day 10 onwards. The GFS is actually pretty late with it compared to the GAM, the GM and the ECMWF. Again, if we have a look at those uh, 10 meter winds, you can see, look at that, very strong winds, gusts there, uh, sustained wind speeds in knots of 30, 40, 50 knots, which is really quite strong. Uh, again, that could even be named storm territory here. So, yeah, we'll have to keep an eye on that if we do see these systems sort of developing. Um, and if they did, it could be very unsettled and perhaps very stormy as we head into the end of September and early October. But, luckily, the next 7 to 10 days in the actual reliable time frame, it still looks generally settled with higher pressure around. Perhaps that little low pressure system that's getting squeezed uh, by high pressure, uh, perhaps on Wednesday and Thursday, that could give some rain. But, of course, we'll update that near the time and see exactly how that does evolve. So, if you do have a look at the GEM run, see how that does compare. Again, the northerly wind at the moment. The high pressure does topple, and we go settled uh, and those temperatures do trend upwards we see that smaller pressure system slide in does get a little bit deeper there so it could be some quite heavy rain there maybe some stronger winds across scotland before eventually high pressure topples see a bit of a northerly wind there but you look at the upper air temperatures and it's not too bad a little slightly cooler air masses here or there it's beyond that you see the high pressure again splinters to the east and to the west Low pressure dives southwards and sits over the top of us. Very, very unsettled this would be. Look at that, 992 millibars. Again, not a severely low pressure system, but they'd be very strong winds, cool temperatures. Uh, again, look at the precipitation, all that heavy rain starting to push into the north, and it would bring more widespread rain. You can see it's starting to accumulate there. It's on day 9, day 10. And you look at the wind speeds, and again, quite strong, 20 to 30 knots there. Wind speeds, especially in coastal areas, and gusts would be higher. Look at the upper air temperatures, cooler air is filtering in around or below average. And again, those temperatures, the surface with strong winds, a lot of rain showers around, would be chilly, low teens, maybe mid teens at the highest in areas. So, yeah, very unsettled this run today. Um, chillier, windy, uh, and yeah, potentially even stormy. Very similar from the GFS and GM in the sort of the low pressure evolution, the way they do it and the time frame of it uh, at that sort of day 10 to day 15 time frame. That is a little bit out of sync, but they both try and develop low pressure over the top of us or very close by, and that perhaps is a consistent signal we're starting to see now. We have seen it hints over the last couple of days, but we have seen some runs hold onto the higher pressure in the long term, but today a lot more are going at lower pressure, especially operational runs. We'll have a look at the ensembles at the end of the video, and you'll actually see the ensembles perhaps are slightly more pessimistic than the operational runs, but then we also have to remember the operational runs are run at high resolution, so always more likely to pick up on small trends um, quicker than the ensemble members. So they can always be perhaps 12 to 24 hours ahead of the ensemble members. So we'll have to see the operational runs stick to this sort of pattern uh, and do see if the ensembles do follow. Uh, and we'll be able to have a look at that really into probably tomorrow's video. If you go over to the ECMWF, see how that does compare. Again, northerly wind at the moment. The high pressure does topple. Later this week, we do see that smaller pressure system squeeze to our north. And eventually, we see a bit of a northerly wind before massive low pressure develops straight over the top of us. And look at that. Very unsettled and stormy there. A lot of strong winds. Very tight isobars there at times. Look at the upper air temperatures around or below average. Look at the temperature deviation. A lot of blues mixing there. So it'd be below average temperatures, mid to low teens pretty chilly for this time of year uh, again we look at look at that again now towards 970 maybe even lower millibars towards the center of this uh low pressure system be very unsettled look at the wind speeds look at these yellows and oranges there that's 30 40 knots again in land it's slightly lower but of course there are going to be stronger wind gusts and it could be very unsettled indeed so all of the runs today are going on a very similar pattern of these small low pressure systems, uh, perhaps uh, on Wednesday and Thursday, 
high pressure dominating apart from that until perhaps day 10 to day 15 where low pressure runs in for the last couple of days of September uh, into the start of October giving us very unsettled maybe stormy conditions that high pressure splintering to our east and our west not only would this be very unsettled stormy with a lot of rain around it would also be quite chilly you can see that high pressure is more out into the Atlantic producing more of a northerly flow into these low pressure systems that would push cooler air in again not cold we're not in sort of november december january february time but it would be cool with bringing a cool feel at the surface now after you finish by have a look at the ensembles you have to see there is a consistent signal that the upper air temperatures are going to be around or below average over the next couple of weeks chilly over the next five days or so trending towards average as i said around the 23rd but then going below average and staying around or below average for the foreseeable future operational run is slightly above average in the longer term uh, perhaps that's because it's got more of a westerly flow instead of a northerly flow feeding into the low you can see though unsettled conditions perhaps but precipitation isn't remarkably high again it could do with the fact that these are lower resolution not going to pick up on all the showers and stuff like that but you'd expect with a high low pressure signal that there would be a lot more showers here and a lot more precipitation spikes but we're not seeing that if we look at the sea level pressure you see definitely a dip in the longer term towards the end of september and start of october but not all of the runs still perhaps a third to a half are going for sort of mean uh, or average sort of sea level pressure to higher pressure. So very interesting seeing that. Perhaps that could be a signal that some of the ensemble members have lower pressure only in the north. Some of them could be what we've been seeing perhaps over the last few days where high pressure remains in control and the low pressure doesn't quite push in and stays more out in the North Atlantic towards Iceland. But yeah, very interesting seeing all the operational runs going for it and then having not too much support from the ensembles. It is something we need to keep an eye on, as I said, the next 24 hours or so will decide that. We'll have to see what the next few ensemble runs go for, whether they do go a lot more unsettled and see what happens with that. If we do look at the ECMWF ensembles, uh, again, around or below average consistently over the next couple of weeks. Yes, chillier than average at the moment, trending towards our average, then dipping below, staying generally below for the foreseeable future. More precipitation spikes here, but there are more ensemble members. Uh, perhaps more of a signal here, definitely for lower pressure. But not, again, massive signal, no huge precipitation spikes and no consistently huge precipitation spikes. But there are quite a lot. So, yes, Eastern DF probably definitely backing the lower pressure solution more. And again, if we look at the sea level pressure from this, again, bigger dip in the longer term. Eastern DF going for a massive dip there uh, with perhaps five to ten other ensemble members. So perhaps around a third to a uh, quarter of ensemble members there going for that big low pressure sitting over the top of us. So it's a very po real possible scenario, but it hasn't got all support yet. But it is day 10 to day 14 time frame, so or day 15 time frame. So there is still a lot of uncertainty, but we'll have to see what happens. But the interesting thing today is all three operational runs are going for a very unsettled, stormy, uh, low pressure sort of signal. Um, and perhaps that is a sign now that that's what is coming into the model time uh, models uh, over the next couple of days. And we'll have to just have to see really what the next sort of 24 hours does hold, whether we do consistently see low pressure solutions in the operation runs and starting to move more into the ensemble members as well. Or do we see um, perhaps they revert and this is just a coincidence where all of the uh, all of the operational runs are uh, sort of going for that low pressure situation for a few runs and then sort of revert a little bit. So we'll have to see what happens, but the signal at the moment is perhaps for a very unsettled, maybe even stormy end to the month and start of October. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Do enjoy the next sort of seven to ten days, even though the temperatures will not, will not be that great. They're going to be around, maybe slightly below average. But still decent in the sunshine uh, is going to be pretty dry, especially in the south. So do make sure you enjoy that because I'm sure in the next few weeks, in the next month or two, we'll get to the point where dry, warm days, we don't have loads of mud around, slick conditions, it's going to be quite hard to come by. So do make sure you enjoy it as we are sort of in this early autumnal uh, period where you can still have sort of summery feel at times with the sun. But we can feel that chill in the air as autumn does start to properly arrive. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you again for another video soon.